I wrecked my tank. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, you didn't. I mean, if your temperature's swinging up and down, it might feel like you did, and I get it. Temp swings are the number one reason for tank crashes. And the good news is that temp swings are easy to prevent. And if you do experience one, there are things you can do to minimize its effect on your reef. So let's break it down and get you on the path to an optimal and stable temperature. But first, let's talk about why temperature matters. Temperature is one of the core fundamentals of a reef tank. It has a direct impact on every living organism in the system. Fish, corals, invertebrates, and even microbes, including beneficial bacteria, rely on a stable temperature to thrive. For example, coral metabolism is highly temperature dependent. Warmer temps can speed up metabolic processes, meaning faster growth rates, but if it gets too warm, it can lead to bleaching. On the flip side, cooler temperatures slow down metabolism, potentially stalling out coral growth. Temperature also plays a big role in dissolved oxygen levels. Warmer water holds less oxygen, which can leave fish gasping at the surface. Cooler water holds more oxygen, but going too cold can stress the immune system of both fish and invertebrates. When the temperature fluctuates drastically in either direction, it can lead to thermal shock, also known as hypo or hyperthermia, affecting not only the immune system, but also causing tissue damage and organ failure, which is often fatal. All of this to say that maintaining the correct temperature and keeping it stable is one of the most basic but also most important responsibilities of a reef keeper. So what temperature should you aim for? A safe range for a reef aquarium is between 76 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 and a half to 26 and a half Celsius. While wild reefs can get as cool as the low 70s during the winter and as high as the mid 80s during the summer, I personally always aim for 78 Fahrenheit because it gives you lots of wiggle room on either side for minor temp swings rather than riding the razor's edge of what our reef critters can tolerate. Now, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say you've probably already experienced some sort of temperature issue. Maybe your heater stopped working, or perhaps it was working, but your temperature was still fluctuating more than you expected. So let's talk about why your reef's temperature can swing, the causes for those minor or gradual swings, as well as the much more dangerous large temperature swings, and more importantly, how to prevent them from happening in the first place, and how to recover from them if they do happen. First and foremost, you need to be able to tell what your aquarium's temperature is in order to tell if it's swinging. And uh, dipping a toe in ain't gonna cut it. You are going to need a thermometer. A simple digital thermometer like this one will work fine, and it is important to always have it in your aquarium and out in the open so that it's easy to see at a glance whenever you're looking at the tank. In other words, don't hide it in your stand. This way, you can always see the temp, and if it starts to drift outside of that safe range, you'll know and you'll be able to start investigating why immediately. You should absolutely also have a reference grade thermometer on hand. Something with NIST certification, an accuracy of at least give or take half a degree Fahrenheit, and a resolution to at least the first decimal point. Why? Because cheap thermometers tend to be off by up to a few degrees, and when it comes to calibrating heaters and controllers, which we will be talking about, you'll need a lab quality tool to use as a reference. This won't be in your tank at all times. It'll be in your toolbox, along with your test kits and your refractometer, but it is important that it's there. So what do I recommend? Any digital thermometer is fine, just avoid sticker thermometers, they just don't give you a very precise reading. I like the Lifeguard Aquatics Big Digital Temp Alert, it gives you both the aquarium temp and the room temperature, which can be pretty handy. It's big, it's easy to read, can't go wrong. But if you prefer something smaller, JBJ's digital thermometer is also a decent grab if you want something a bit more discreet. No matter which thermometer you use, definitely check it against a reference thermometer just to make sure it's accurate. When it comes to a NIST certified reference thermometer. I really like Hannah's HI98509 Check Temp 1. Not only is it certified and hits all of those requirements that I mentioned earlier, it has a stand for the display, a long cable, and a long probe, which makes it easy to use single-handed, and it reads quickly. Now let's get down to brass tacks. The vast majority of temperature-related swings are caused by one very temperamental, pun intended, piece of aquarium equipment, your heater. 
Heater failure is the killer of reef tanks. A heater that fails off leaves your tank in the cold, which might not be terrible if you happen to keep your house around 72 degrees, but any less than that and it gets pretty dangerous. The real killer though is when it fails on, increasing the tank temperature well beyond the safe range, causing a steep drop in oxygen levels and temperature shock setting off a chain reaction where one organism dies, fouling the tank, killing the next, and then the next, until even the hardiest organism succumbs to the deteriorating condition of the tank. It is a nightmare, and we will go over your best courses of action if this does happen, so bear with me. But I think you're getting the picture. Relying on a heater alone to manage your aquarium's temperature is just a terrible idea. So what do you do? First, accept that every heater will fail at some point. So step one is simply treat every heater as disposable. Use it only as long as the manufacturer warranties it for. As soon as that warranty is up, toss it in the bin and replace it with a new one. This way you aren't pushing the expected lifespan of the heater. Step two is to add redundancy by using a temperature controller. A Wi-Fi temperature controller is a very affordable way to take away the extremely important role of turning the heating element on and off to regulate the aquarium's temperature away from your heater, removing that mechanical stress that causes heaters to fail, and giving it to a smarter device that will do a much better job and be able to send you a push notification to your phone if the temperature ever falls outside the safe range. So instead of the heater's internal thermostat doing the heavy lifting, the heater controller does the main temperature regulation and you simply set the heater's thermostat to be a degree or two higher than the temperature controller. This way, if the temperature controller ever fails, the heater's thermostat won't let the temperature go above that slightly higher set temp, which keeps your tank safe long enough for you to notice the slightly elevated temperature and replace the faulty controller. On that note, always have a backup heater and heater controller on hand for when you eventually need to replace them, either because the warranty has expired and it's time to swap them out, or in the event that they fail early. The last thing you want is to be frantically driving to the local fish store hoping that they have what you need in stock while your tank's experiencing a failure. If it's already waiting on a shelf at home, it's just a quick swap, and you can get new replacements for the shelf at your leisure without leaving your tank in the lurch. While those steps are the minimum that I recommend, there are a few more things you can do to add further redundancy. For example, you can use two heaters instead of one. That way, if one heater fails off, the second heater can continue to hold the temp steady without you having to lift a finger. Sure, you are replacing two heaters at a time every year or so, but for the extra roughly $30, it's worth it for the added safety net. And if you're using titanium heating elements instead of aquarium heaters, not only should you be using a temperature controller to act as their thermostat because they don't have one, but I'd highly recommend plugging it into an aquarium controller to act as the backup. That way, if the temperature controller fails, the aquarium controller can take over and act as the thermostat to turn the heating system on and off, as well as notify you that something's gone wrong with your heating system so that you know you need to replace it. Just setting up those redundancies is enough to keep your aquarium safe from the most common and most dangerous temperature swings. But heater failures aren't the only reason your temp might swing. Not using correctly sized heaters, in particular an undersized heater, can cause your tank to experience slow mild swings while it struggles to reach the correct temperature. A drafty room from a window or a door being left open on a very hot or a very cold day can also cause the temperature in an aquarium to swing. Also, assuming that a heater or a heater controller is perfectly calibrated right out of the box, can be the cause of temperature issues. And even if they were calibrated, they can fall out of calibration over time. So you gotta stay on top of it. Remember that NIST certified reference thermometer? Yes, the reason you want one on hand is so that you have that reference for when you need to recalibrate your heater, heater controller, or aquarium controller. The good news is with those redundancies you've set up, no matter why your temp is swinging, you should be able to catch it very early and have lots of time to resolve it before any of your inhabitants start to get too uncomfy. However, if you have a big swing in either direction, what should you do? Step number one, identify what equipment failed. If the tanks become far too cold, get the heating restored as quickly as possible to get the tank temp headed back in the correct direction. 
If the tank has become far too hot, immediately unplug the heating system to allow the tank to begin to cool while you replace the failed heaters and controller. Next, prepare as much fresh salt water as you can for water changes. Any die-off that has occurred will have already begun to foul the water. Doing those water changes helps to stop that cascade effect while also bringing the temperature back to where it needs to be since the water that you're changing should be mixed to the correct temperature. Another great step to take is to get as much surface agitation going as possible. This will help restore oxygen levels and assist in evaporative cooling. And it can be as simple as just aiming your flow pumps towards the surface of the water. And if you can, you can add a bag of ice or frozen bottles of water to your sump to help gradually drop that temperature. Just be sure to monitor the temp as you don't want it to drop too rapidly or too far. You'll need to very closely monitor your tank once the temperature is stabilized, removing any dead or decaying corals, fish, or invertebrates so that they don't continue to foul the water. Continue to also do those water changes until the aquarium itself stabilizes and everything returns to normal. It absolutely will feel like a frantic and mad dash, but with those preventative measures I talked about, you should be able to avoid this kind of catastrophic event altogether. And because of that, temperature swings likely won't be the issue you deal with most frequently. That award goes to the absolute myriad of pests that can infiltrate your reef tank. But there is good news. I've got a whole playlist that shows you how to deal with all of them from algae to anemones. So get ahead of the curve and find out how to beat them before they take root by clicking right here.